All right, John, uh, thank you for joining us here at This Is Anfield. Yeah, and uh, as one of Jurgen's key members of coaching staff, we thought who better to ask for their memories of Liverpool's best European nights under Jurgen at Anfield, yeah. ahead of hopefully a couple of big European nights for the Reds again this season. So we've, we'll have listed our top five nights under Jurgen and we're going to test your memory and kind of see where we were at. And the first one that we're going to kick things off was back in 2016 uh, yeah. against Man United and Daniel Sturridge taking the penalty. Yeah. So first time we'd played Man United in Europe. Yeah. Um, Sturridge obviously scored that penalty. And just obviously Jurgen had not been in the club that long at that point. What, what were your thoughts going into that game, the first big one in, under the lights, and yeah. the European night for you? Well, I remember there was a Dutch coaching staff on the other side. That was a, a big memory of, of us, obviously Van Gaal and, and Franz, who the goalie coach, uh, they were on the Man United staff. And obviously uh, when you come at Liverpool, you learn quick what the big games are and then to play them in, uh, in the European game was massive and uh, I think we were all fired up and ready for it and we had a big aggression and um, yeah I, I, we, we all were really uh, aggressive in uh, as a person as well on, on, on the bench you know it was still on the old stand and uh, I, re I remember me shouting something when we scored the first one <laughs> and, 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 uh, and jumping up. But uh, I wouldn't repeat what I said, but uh, Pete was laughing his head out when he heard that. And uh, yeah, we obviously played really well and uh, we were really on fire. And you, you know the atmosphere from the crowd, it is just amazing the way the crowd is lifting the team over, over the, them games. Was that something you said in Dutch or in English? Was you? <laughs> no, you know? I, I was saying it in <laughs> in in, uh, in English, uh, but uh, I wouldn't repeat it. But it was like, yeah, we want desperate to win the game, of course. So, and obviously that was quite early in Jurgen's tenure. And what was it like when Jurgen came in? What was the conversations with yourself? And how does it work in terms of you know you you stayed on within the coaching staff, and since then the goalkeeping coaching <laughs> yeah. staff have, have evolved as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, when the boss came in, it was like I knew him already for 10 years, the way he speaks with you and the way uh, he, he tells things and the way he, he acts. And yeah, you know, and, uh, it, every day is an enjoy working with him, really, to be honest. And I, I hope and think for every player it's the same. Uh, he lifted the whole club basically to a new level, but also the supporters. He changed the atmosphere in the stadium, you know, keep the players uh, or the, the, the supporters more in the stadium. You know, he was saying like they left already always earlier and now they stayed to the last second because he was convinced and telling them that like we will win games in the last seconds of the games. So you have to be there till the final moments and stay behind the team. and. You know, he changed the, the way the people thought about it and, and changed the whole club around, really, from, like he said, doubters to believers. And, 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 you know, that's all credit to the boss in what he did. And he changed the culture back to what it was in the past by bringing a winning mentality and, and uh, a way of work where you can compete and try to be the best and the best you can be, basically. And on the photograph there, we've got David De Gea in opposition. How much do you study opposition goalkeepers? You know, obviously, at the moment, we're thinking about Benfica. Are you already studying their goalkeepers and which way they might tend to go if it went to penalties? Um, yeah, we, we, we always do. Whatever. Obviously, the analysts, they help us. They do a lot. You know, I have James, who uh, is uh, the set play specialist, who does a lot of the work. And, and Dan and and, uh, and Craig, they're working also in the department with uh, with Robo. So we have we have, we have quite a, a big uh, department in that, and they all have their input in helping all 
pre-game or post-game to give us the stuff we need. And obviously we can go to them to say, oh, we need this or think about this. But they are, they do a lot of work and they don't need too much guiding over all the years we've been working with it. Uh, you know, that's something I started. Uh, I think when Brandon was the manager to make a goalkeeping meeting, especially for the goalkeepers. But we always have given information to the players as well on on, on set plays and and, and penalties. So uh, you know, I, I remember Louis always asked me, uh, you know, get me the iPad. I want to see the free kick taker. So we give it. So we we supply that to to them, and and uh, that's something. Yeah, what we developed over the years and you, you always have to try and add things and, and be inventive and think about things to try and help the goalies or the players as much as we can. And like, how early would you give a goalkeeper, the Liverpool goalkeeper, information on the penalty takers? You know, obviously they sort of get a last minute <laughs> bit of information, but is it something that you work on the day before a penalty shootout or the day before the game? Or? No, we, we uh, yeah. All the players practice penalties and also the goalies are in goal to try to save them. So it it works both ways. They they practice on, on, on high level goalies to, to score penalties and, and and they can practice either way to to try to make uh, decisions and change uh, corners if they have to really and Obviously, you look at the opponents as well and, and try to get information on that. But there is no guarantee in the end. You try to help it, you know, it's still... You need luck to win as well, but you can prepare as good as you can, really. That, that's what we try to do, really. OK, so moving on. Uh, same season, Dortmund arrived at Anfield and this was the scene that welcomed the coach coming in. Yeah. Know? How well do you remember that and what was the reaction of all the staff like that first time? Yeah. Some of the players maybe hadn't seen that before. I, I know, I know. It, it, you know, my, my first time was, um, I think we could win the league. Uh, Brendan. Yeah, and, and yeah, it was like getting goosebumps really, the way the people were shouting and, and singing and, and the aggression they gave and that left really the place. And yeah, with. with the Dortmund game, I think, was the first time for the boss. Probably it happened like that, and uh, yeah, then he could see like you know there is a lot of uh, hunger for the team to do something really, and and, and the club was all all the supporters are really hungry to win, and I think that that is uh, probably the first, one of the first times he saw that probably on uh, Anfield. How much do you think that helps the the players? You know, when they get that reception before a big game, a big European yeah, game, especially that pumps the adrenaline. No, so uh, you know you all get fired up from it. Without losing your head the wrong way, you know you need to get the right motivation and in the right spirit and your right mindset for the game, really. Okay, so next game we've got here. You're sat quite pensive on the on the bench beforehand. This is when Manchester City arrived in the Champions League. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts, sort of, going when you're sat on the bench pre-match? You know, what what are you thinking about as the goalkeeper coach? Are you all about the match itself, or more specific uh, on the goalkeeper? Yeah, it's most of the times already. I don't sleep too well the night before the game because you're always thinking, you know, if everything is going to be going well, and uh, you know, you know. You take the pressure also from if the goalie plays well or not playing well. So that's always what you have in yourself, and, and um, you just hope that everything goes well and that everyone is on it and you know ready to win the game really. And on this game, obviously City was already a massive team then, you know, and playing good football, and they probably were. A, a, quite quite a bit ahead at that moment compared to us because we we were still in in a, a moving forward way if you like with the boss try to implement all his tactics and way of play and and change players uh, around and stuff and and yeah then obviously we were flying I think in that game pretty much set ourselves in a good stead for for the second game. And obviously, I could not ask you now about the games that are coming up then against Manchester City. Is mm. that something that 
is in the back of your mind at the moment. Obviously, it's a couple of games away, but yeah, we we, ne we ne to be honest, and that's the truth. We never think ahead, really. We all only focus on the games coming up. We need to have the perfect work that week for that game. We need to have the the all, all the the things tacticals. Uh, working for that game, so we can only work on that. We cannot think ahead, really. Watford, they fighting for their lives. We need to be switched on. We have one session to prepare uh, all the players, and that's what we try to do. And from the Watford game, if the Watford game is done, and hopefully we can get a winning result, then you focus on the next one, and, and that's what we do. And and yeah, that's like a rhythm and, and a way of work. Okay, so moving on to the next game, we've got. Roma here and a certain Mr. Alison Becker <coughs> in goal for the opposition. Yeah. So just firstly D different haircut this time. <laughs> very different haircut, different kit, it's wearing blue. Yeah. Um you know, that Roma game, it was mm. that the atmosphere that night was incredible, you know, in my opinion. And do you feel that? Can you sense when the crowd is is different? Yeah, you you you, you see you feel that when there's big games, you no, know, and, and we lucky at the moment that we have quite a few of them so definitely the, the the European games they are special because the crowd lift but it happens sometimes also in the league although it still can be better at times in the league as well like and and now especially the next next games we need the the supporters massive behind us to help us and give us an extra boost and I think that should also happen if we play Saturday on a 12 to the kickoff they have to be fired up as well and hopefully they can help us because it does help it like I just explained before obviously I also remember the the Shane Cox situation from after the game and that stick with everyone's uh, memory as well and you know that was a bad situation, and you know you talk with everyone after the day after about it, and that kills a little bit the good the good game we had in in that game. And yeah, obviously Ali was in goal. Um, I was Ali following Ali for a long time, so it was good to see him play live uh, as well. And you know, I know he conceded a lot of goals, but if you look back, he couldn't do too much about the goals. Really, it was just the way we finished them and the way we played that night. And we, you know, the team was uh, flying and, and uh, made a good step. So you said there that you've been following Ali for quite a while. Like, mm. how how long had you you know followed him, and how much research goes into scouting a goalkeeper like that? Uh, how involved in the process are you? Yeah, I've been I've been watching. I, I I think, well, 2013 was the first time I saw him when he played at International. Um, I asked Donny, you know, like you know, is there any any goalkeepers uh, out in Brazil who I should look at? And then he said, yeah, look at Ali. And but I I always get information from other people, or they text me, or hey, if you see this one or that one, or. But I also go through all the leagues to see if there's new goalies comes up, and then I, I always try to watch one game, and if I like it, then I keep following it. If I don't like it, I, I write it off because I'm, I'm looking at a, a special kind of goalie. And in the end, uh, if I need or the club needs goalies, I give a list with what I saw or what I thought. If it's number one, two, three, or if it's a, a young goalie, and if it's a young goalie, obviously. You have a, you need to ask people about it and try to get something together on that, and then you keep following them and every time, you know. So it's not like uh, a small job if you like. And I started that when I came to the club on the first day, and yeah, then you suggest uh, keepers, and then it's up to the club: can they afford it, uh, or is the possibility or no possibility to do it? And um, yeah. So had you seen Ali live before that night at Anfield? Had you gone over yeah. to, to watch him play in person? We, we saw him uh, because nowadays it's easy to watch everything. You can all the goalies you can watch on uh, on the scouting network. So I, I watch only games. I never go to games because if I drive to Birmingham to watch a goalie, I can watch the same goalie three games mm. or four games on on a bounce. So. Um, so time-wise, it's not not cool to go somewhere to watch a goalie live when I can see it on my laptop and I know if the movements and the positional is good and the way he is moving. So I do my homework there and then 
all, we have a lot of scouts as well to, to do work on it. They can cut videos and, and show uh, clips as well. And so it's a big process on, on that. I'm only uh, a part of it really to try and find the next one always. And yeah, that's my passion as well to find the best number one, number two, number three and young goalies. And I always had that and try to keep following that up. So, yeah, when I saw Ali the first time was, I think, in, uh, in the USA uh, live. We played uh, Rome um, in a pre-season friendly and uh, I already told the boss about him and then obviously he liked the goalie in that game. I said, yeah, that's the, uh, the one I was telling you about. But we have also talked about other goalies. Uh, I, I talked in the past uh, when Neuer was still at Schalke, uh, when Handanovic was at Udinese uh, and uh, Testega was in Germany at Gladbach. I, I talked about that as well. And if it happens or not happens, you know, that is not in your hands. Uh, so, uh, and obviously with this uh, and with Sai came, uh, it was similar really. And then in the end, obviously, uh, now we spend a lot of money. Uh, the owners uh, wanted to try and find the best goalie out there and at the time I said to the boss that's the only goalie I would pay the money for. Um, and obviously Noy is another goalie who, who is in a similar way but is already a few years older so um, you know and then obviously you need to hope that it all fall into place. And so with Alisson then how did, when did you find out that the club were going to press forward and try to sign him? Was it literally yeah. the, the day that they did and that was it? Or was uh, it a week or two before? No, I, I think it, it works over a longer period, but the club will know exactly uh, how, how it works. I, I tell the boss and the boss has more communication with the owners and, and, and with the recruitment guys. And I walk sometimes in the office to the recruitment guys, did you see this one or I saw this one? And just small talks and then the club uh, will do the work um, there. I don't get too much involved in that really. Uh, the boss is in, in that side uh, in charge and the boss decides uh, if he wants this one or that one. He is in charge of that. Okay, so final game then. Can't never forget this one, will we? <laughs> Yeah. First match Barcelona. Yeah, nice picture that, huh? It's a it's an incredible picture, an incredible moment. Yeah, you know, I, saw, I saw one of them uh, like full length. Uh, we have it in in Anfield hanging. It's a nice nice picture to have the whole squad like that. Uh, what what's going through your mind when you know the crowd are in front of you and the, yeah. the reception after that? I mean, it started already with the boss really. Uh, you know, we, we missed quite, quite missed a few players. No, uh, I think Bobby was not there, and Mo, Mo not there. Yeah, and then we had uh, Shakiri starting. So, you know, people probably wrote us off. But if you look at the game away, how many chances we had? We were. I, I was sitting on the bench with the feeling, yeah, we we gonna we gonna score any time really. And out of nothing, they scored uh, two two or three goals. No, and yeah, and then. Then you think, uh, oh, now it's going to be tough. But then the boss basically uh, said, you know, he had like before the game, I know everyone writes us off really, but uh, I have faith and belief in you. You know, it could be a great thing that we could write some history for your grandkids. Um, and, and uh, you know, we just have to give it our best shot and give it everything you got. and try to give all the energy and leave nothing in the tank and then see where it's bring. But I have the faith that we can turn it around. And I remember Jürgen saying that in the press conference before the game, he said, if, if anybody can do it, it's us. Yeah, that's what he said in the meeting. And yeah, and then you need a bit of luck as well. But, you know, in the end, uh, the boys were on fire, you know, and I think everyone would have remembered the boss's speech before the game as well. Do you, as a goalkeeper coach, take a little bit of time to speak 
just with the goalkeeper for that game if it's a big game like that to maybe help with the, the psychology to calm their nerves or anything like that? No, no, not really because uh, in the end we do all the preparation in training, we, we make uh, sessions where we uh, try to work what the opponent do, we have video analysis with them, we show them corners, free kicks, the way they press or the way they press the goalie so you take the calmness or you, you show them and, and give them the calmness there really by telling okay this is what will happen so you, you kind of uh, put the picture already in his mind so we can focus on that and then when the goalie needs to play you need to let him play the game and not try to affect it really and let him do his things. Obviously that game leads to Madrid European Cup number six for Liverpool. What was it like for yourself to have been such a big part of delivering a European Cup for Liverpool Football Club? Yeah, I don't see it like that really, to be honest. Uh, I'm more like you want to win every game and you want to do the best you can. You want to prepare the people as good as you can, the goalies. We want to prepare the number one, two and three all together for the best we can. and. And then, yeah, everyone as a club, we want to win and then hope it will happen. And, and, and that's it. I'm not thinking, oh, I, I have won this, I won that. But I do think I want to win more and I want to win every time. And I want to win every game that is just in, in a mentality. And I think if you play for, for Liverpool, I think that is what the boss changed around. He changed the mentality in the club from uh, really getting to win us, you know, and, and really uh, every game you have to produce the same to get the end result of winning games and that's a mentality change he made, you know, for Liverpool you only expect to win and, and that is what you learn really, uh, but I, I realised that on the first day I stepped into Liverpool as a coach that we are here to win games, you know, the history tells you that we need to win, so that's, I, although I played at Trummy, I still had this kind of mentality and, and yeah, that mentality never changed. I was obsessed by winning and be the best and do everything as good as I can and that doesn't change and if you win one time you want to win two times if you win two times you want to win three times and i think the boss pete and pep we all have this mentality really to be honest you, you spoke there about jürgen's speech before the barcelona game that everybody will remember that right yeah. do you remember his speech after the defeat in kiev you know when he sort of promised that there will be more opportunities and did he did uh, you think back to that after they after you won it in madrid um, not really. Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I was in the dressing room when he spoke to them, but he, did, he, he, he doesn't speak too much uh, after the games. He normally takes it the day after, but um, I, I, he probably tried to calm them and say, you know, we go again and, and that's it really. No one knows if we, we will return, you know, you can only hope that you have this opportunity again. So, and I think that's how you always uh, prepare every game you want to win, but you never know if you get to a final or not. It's difficult to say, there's too many obstacles and that's why you have to work from game to game and just focus on that game.